The books of Boston neighborhoods come from many walks of life, whether it's the autobiographies of Malcolm X and Nat Hintoff in connection with Roxbury, or the stories of politics, violence, and healing from South Boston. Most of these books are by insiders sharing special insights with the rest of us, but there's a new book from an outsider. For all the neighborhood ties, he really is like the rest of us, often trying to fit in, even if it requires standing up and putting up a fight. He was born in Dorchester and spent many years running a business and living in South Boston. The title of his book is The Constant Outsider, and it's published by exlibris.com. We'd like to welcome the author, Tom Sirignano. Thanks for being with us, Tom. Oh, thank you for inviting me. You, you are just like the rest of us, except for one thing. You wrote a book about it, so why did that happen? Well, it really wasn't my idea. I mean, over the years, you know how you talk to friends and relatives, and you might mention in conversation how different things happen to you, and people seem to be amazed at all the things that happen to me. So many times I heard, you know, you should write a book. So finally I started to make notes, and I said, maybe I do have enough material and things that happen that would be able to be put into a book. One of the things I almost take for granted in reading your book was how normal your, wi your life was. I come from Dorchester originally myself, and in those days when, when we were growing up, kids really did run all over the place in the streets. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your case, that happened, uh, but it always, uh, well, not always, but often enough, it turned ugly for you. Yeah, it did. And it wasn't of my choosing. And uh, it took me a long time to figure out why, you know, some of the reasons that that might have been. But and I try to go in depth in the, of those situations in the book. So you're from an Italian American family and most of the kids in this neighborhood in Dorchester were from Irish American families. Mm -hmm. they, they were the ethnic taunts, they were picking on you and driving you batty. Um, yeah. So did you say, I'm going to talk to my dad and he's going to straighten that out? Oh, no, that's one thing I never did. I never talked to my dad because um, I don't know why. He was intimidating to me and I don't think See, he, I wasn't the type that went out to look for fights. My dad was a fighter, and I knew that he would say, you know, attack these people or punch them as hard as you can, and that just wasn't in my nature. And finally, I had to learn how to do that. What did you learn about uh, at least the right way to do it? Well, I don't know if it was the right way, but it, it just, things got to a point, and we see it all the time in, in today's news. People take things to the extreme. Thank God I never did that, but... Uh, I got to the point where I just had to make a decision to stand up for myself. And that's why I, uh, you know, if you read the book, you'll find out that I took a few swings at people and, uh, and finally found out that, yeah, I mean, people leave you alone if they know you're going to get hit, you know. So that's what I did. You also write about uh, a phase of your life that took place when your family moved to suburbs, and uh, this is like uh, what I saw a bit of when I was growing up in, in Hyde Park after we moved out of Dorchester. Um, kids are into cars, mm -hmm. uh, fooling around, um, and drinking. Yeah, yeah. It was an amazing transformation in my life because I went from inner city, you know, blue collar neighborhood to a neighborhood where basically everybody in the, in the vicinity, their parents owned a business of some sort. It was, Braintree was maybe considered affluent at that time. And uh, so these kids had a lot of time and a lot of money to, to play with. They bought cars, they had fun, and it was all within view of my bedroom corner window. I mean, the, the Colbert school that I uh, ended up hanging around in, I could see and hear everything that went on over there. And, uh, I explained how I uh, made a decision that I had to get in good with that group, and I took all the steps you know, necessary to do so. Now, some of your friends, yes, they came from families that could buy them cars, but you also had some skills for handling cars. Oh, yeah, I was a mechanic. So I kind of fit in on that aspect, too, because uh, you know, I could work on cars, I could fix them. And, uh, but, I, of course, I didn't have a car. My dad forbid me from having a car for a long time. And, uh, until I demanded the right to do that. So, but yeah, I fit in with cars. Yeah. What I get from reading your book is that you grew up at a time, as I did, uh, when going to college was not universal. You weren't necessarily a loser if, if you feel to go to college after high school. And what I see you doing is that you had adventures. You, you had adventures with cars, not always very <laughs> sane adventures, but then it was motorcycles and Mount Washington, the boats in the harbor, mm -hmm. and, and the ultralight aircraft. Yeah. I've always wanted to try everything. 
And if something looked interesting to me, I, I just said, I want to do that. And uh, it was, I think it was on one of those evening magazine shows I saw the paraplane being demonstrated back in the 1970s. And as soon as I saw that, I said, well, that's something I've got to do. And I saved my money and bought a paraplane. Ended up crashing it in the ocean, but at least I did it. Yeah, but some people might say, well, that's just a kid being a kid, even though the kid's too old to be a kid. But, 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 but it, it, was that all there was to it, or was there more than that to it for you? You mean as far as buying being able, uh, not so much ultralights buying and things, but being able to have those experiences? I don't know. I always I was looking for excitement, you know, because I was held, maybe because I was held down away from it growing up, that I wanted to experience everything I could. Once I got the freedom, I just went... Maybe you might say I, might, I went crazy and tried to try, try everything. I think you know a lot of people when they hold their kids down and and keep them on a short lease. Once they get loose, there they just kind of go overboard. I think.